Hello, hope you're good. So this week I've had a question from someone. So Roxana wanted to know how I approach people that don't necessarily want to do what I advise them to do. So this happens all the time and probably with every single case, there's always something that even the most like open owners, the most onboard owners have something like, mm, I'd rather not do that if I don't have to. So this happens all the time. So there's a few different things to keep in mind. So firstly, is that often the owners are doing all really good things. It's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's not their fault that the problem's happening, but they just don't necessarily want to do what I feel might be helpful. So like an example of this might be um, moving a litter tray to like, for example, if a cat's like weeing on the bed, then I would say like, if they're going to the bed to wee, then it's useful for them to have a tray nearby so that when they get there, they can, they have an opportunity to say, actually, the bed's there but there's a tray here so we're making it really easy for them to make that choice but obviously not many people want to have a litter tray next to the bed um so and that's that's fine so um like really what with with these sorts of suggestions i al always think that there are very good reasons sometimes why the person might not want to do what they want to do so i do have a litter tray in my bedroom but not everybody is open to the idea of having litter trays in bedrooms and i get that there are other reasons in that like they might have small children there might be financial reasons. So if I'm suggesting that they um, cat proof the garden, so put fencing up all around the garden so that other cats can't come in, that's not that's not cheap. And they might not want to transform their, their garden to like suit the cats in that way. And there are other reasons in that like some people, if, if for example, it's like you need to play with your cat loads more. Some people have other commitments, some people have health issues, some people might be caring for elderly relatives or just have a lot on their plate. And I do understand all these things, like it might be genuine as to why they can't put the stuff in place. So in these situations, it is hard because I'm trying to convince them like, well, it's hard because you, you know what will help and you can see that very clearly. But if it's not an option, I do make it clear to them. I say, look, I totally understand that it's not practical for, practical for you to do this. But if you can find a way around it, then I do feel like this will help. So that's one issue that it is important to have that appreciation of sometimes they're not just being difficult or just not wanting to do what I'm suggesting, then um, then that can help because at least you're not just saying like, you know, you have to do this if you want it to help, but you are sort of having an understanding that it might not be best practice, like most practical for you, but if you can find a way, then it'll work. Another thing I find difficult, more difficult, is when someone's doing the wrong thing. So for example, like a common example here is handling and something I quite struggle with. So someone that's like carrying the cat around or like overhandling them. So they're stroking them loads and loads and loads or they might be playing with them and the cat might be like biting or scratching or like being quite difficult. And I'm having to say like, I don't think your cat actually likes this, but they don't see that because this is what they've always done and their cat seems to like it. And I guess there's a little bit of a mismatch there in what they're seeing versus what I'm seeing. So here I find it more um, useful to sort of give examples of so like, oh, when a cat's feeling overstimulated, then you'll notice their tail swishing or you'll notice they will bite you every now and again. Not hard, but just as part of the play or part of the handling, then you're noticing these things and then just sort of highlight that these aren't to be ignored and these are behaviours where they are actually telling you they're not enjoying it. And depending on what the problem is, like if you handle them in a different way or if you keep interactions on their terms, then you will probably find that the aggression resolves or the peeing resolves, whatever it is that the problem is. So here it is important to have that conversation and to give those examples, but I also find it's useful to draw on your experience. So to say like, oh, I've seen this like in other cats and this is what's helped. And, um, they, you know, they, they followed this for a week and they saw like a, a really big difference. So it can be useful to sort of, I guess it's just your word, but you're sort of like giving some proof that actually it has happened in this way previously. I Sometimes when it comes to it, if people really aren't sort of on board, then I say things like, um, let's just do this as an experiment <laughs> just to see, like, obviously you don't want to litter in your bedroom or in the hallway or whatever, but let's just try it. And then if you find they're using the tray 100% of the time, then we know that that's an important bit. If they don't use it at all, then it's fine, we'll get rid of it. So normally that's enough for someone to say like, okay, fine, I'll give it a shot. And so a few times I've just asked them to humour me, which is a bit silly, but for example, like the litter trays with the top opening, so it's like a bucket, like a really large bucket, 
with no hole around the edge, but a big hole on the top and the cat has to jump up and into the litter trays. If I see them, I'm just like, can you just hum humour me on this one and just swap it over to a big open tray because like low sided open tray. Um, and that is because for loads of cats in the past that I've seen with this tray have had issues using it. So um, I'm like, it probably won't make any difference, but if it does, like it's a, it's a quick fix. So I'll just say, let's just try that. Even if they're like, this isn't gonna work. I'm like, just humour me and see if that works. So I do find that these sort of things can help. But what I think the crux of this problem is, is regardless of what angle you come at it with, is that you need to understand what the cat's feeling. You need to take the time to sit with that person and talk through that cat's behaviour, talk through what's going on in the environment and talk through how the owner's feeling and make sure that you have a very, very clear picture of everything that's happening for that cat. Because then you can be confident in the advice that you give. It's not a case of like, even before you've turned up, you're thinking, okay, this cat has there's weeing on the beds, there's three cats there and they've only got one tray, so I know they're gonna need more trays because what you might find is you might put in more trays and they might not even use them. So it is not a case of just taking like one size fits all and then pushing that because you think that that will work because it probably would, but it is also important that you know that individual cat and you know that individual environment because so like every cat is different and so many times I've given some advice and it hasn't worked and so we're like oh okay well let's try something different and then that has worked so it's not like like for example when I do introductions then I always recommend like let's meet through a barrier and do it that way with them, some distractions to hand and all that stuff but there are cats that don't work well in that scenario because they there's nothing that can keep them distracted or there's no treats that work or every time they see the other cat they're flying towards them anyway so it's like okay now we have to work around it okay i have a specific understanding of your individual cat and what he needs um and like say for example with some um street cat a street cat I was working with we were trying to do these sorts of introductions but actually he was much more comfortable outside because of his history i guess so we did the introductions outside and there was no barrier there but because we had so much space to work with, it was easier to manage that. We have both cats outside and they could come in, come in and out when they wanted to, but they were meeting outside. And actually that worked really well, but that isn't something that I would just say across the board, like, oh, try your meetings outside, it might work better. So as long as you know that you're, you have that specific cat's best interest at heart and you feel like you've got a really good grasp of the situation and you know what that genuine, that cat genuinely needs and have an appreciation of what is manageable for that owner, then I feel like you can be confident in the advice that you give because like that's that's the that's the hard bit is trying to understand what they need. So really it's just about being non-judgmental and supportive and just making the owner feel like you're on their side and you're there to help them because that is true. Even if they're doing all the wrong things, you still want to support that owner into a place where they're doing the right things for their cats and their life is easier and the cat's life is easier. But everybody shuts down if you go, you're doing this all wrong. You don't have to do it my way instead of your way. Really, that that's not going to work. They're going to shut down. So really, we want to have a like no judgment for what they've done already and draw on your experience as to what has worked for you in the past and why you think it will work for the cat that you're dealing with. And hopefully they'll be more amenable to um, changing their behaviour or putting some more things in place that will be helpful. I hope that's helpful. I hope that was that answered your question. Um, if anyone has any other questions that they want me to answer, then please do ask. And I will see you Saturday for another video. Take care. Bye.